Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Texas Insider TV. I'm Jim Cardle. We're pleased today to be able to visit with Senator Florence Shapiro from Plano, the 8th Senatorial District of Texas up in Collin and Denton counties. Senator Shapiro's long been involved in education policy in our great state, dating back to Governor George Bush's days. Senator, you helped pass some of the charter school laws and have been intimately involved ever since then, most recently with end of course exams, and we'll get into that and even some budgetary issues. But Senator, having been doing this for a long time, you're obviously motivated, you're a former teacher. Tell us some of the things that every day you wake up motivated to try and tackle for the kids in the future of our state, if you would. Well, it starts, of course, with my background. There's no doubt about it. I was a high school English teacher for a number of years when I first graduated from college. And having three of my own children and nine grandchildren, the future of this state uh, looks very bright, and I want it to be a part of the education process. Um, I have been the chairman of the Education Committee in the Senate now for six years, and I think we've done some really good work, some really important work, to change the dynamics of education in the state. One of the issues that I think I'm most proud of is that we've changed our accountability system to meet the needs of our students. For too long, we were looking at the tax test, and we made the decision that all you had to do was pass the tax test, and voila, you were held accountable. That is absolutely unacceptable, and we've changed that. We now have, as an accountability system, it's all based on college and career readiness so that our students are now taking more rigorous courses. They're having to pass end of course exams. They don't anymore have to take one test, one day, pass fail, and we won't be teaching to the test anymore. This will be coursework that these high school students will be doing. Big difference, and I think that's a dramatic change in our state's education system. And everything that we'll do now, according to our end of course exams and our career and college readiness techniques, will start back in the third grade and we will build all of those into our curriculum in order to get at the end to a career or college ready student. So now what they're being tested on is their college readiness and their career readiness and we've changed career and technology it's not the it's not the same old um, what we used to call homemaking and wood shop uh, it's now really those kinds of activities for students who when they graduate with a career ready uh, degree they actually are ready to go into a technical field or they're ready to go into a job and they have a and they have a diploma too often they were leaving school without a diploma. And we all know that today, in today's society, you cannot, you cannot go anywhere in today's society with a GED or without a, a diploma. Dropouts are a major focus of a lot of the work that we did and we're doing. We want to make sure that we keep our students in school, huge issue. Um, we really think, and I've heard the statistics, I'm not making it up, that a student walks out in the sixth grade, excuse me, a student drops out in the sixth grade and walks out in the ninth grade. So that these students have already started thinking about, this is not for me, I don't need to stay here, for varieties of reasons. And we really focus this last interim on middle school. Uh, the child who is betwixt or between in age, that from the sixth to the ninth grade feels the need to drop out for a variety of different reasons. And we've got to focus on those students, find out what their needs are, make sure that their teachers are competent, not just in general education, but have a very specific field of expertise, whether it's math or science or English, not just a generalist, but a, a very specific um, diploma. So we're looking at the teachers, we're looking at the principals, and we're certainly looking at the students and their needs in the middle schools. All of this will focus together to get us, I think and I hope, what we're really looking for and that's more rigorous curriculum, expectations high, make sure that we always keep our expectations high, and our accountability system will now be based on more than just a test. Our accountability system will now be based on career and college readiness standards. Okay, well let's talk a little bit more about those 
initiatives, particularly in the middle school. You mentioned math. Uh, a lot of folks don't know it's a key time in a student's life where they're going from simpler math to more complex algebra. Uh, reading in the early elementary ages is key, but then in the middle school. Tell us some of the things and the challenges that you see if we have in the past addressed the high school or your focus has been on high school issues, what are you thinking uh, is coming down the pike for middle school initiatives? The middle school student has kind of been skipped over. We've done really well in the elementary grades. We've got some great scores for our minority students. As you look at what we've seen nationally, Texas leads the way. But um, our middle schoolers we haven't really focused on. Our high schoolers we focused on the last two sessions. Hence the accountability structure changes, the end of, end of course exams now, those things have all changed. So we realized that the middle school was the, was the grade level that we really needed to look at. Sixth, seventh, and eighth grade is really the middle school. There are two major issues that we recognize. Students in the sixth grade are dropping out. They're actually walking out in the ninth grade. They have made a decision for whatever reason. They can't read. They don't feel like they're being challenged enough. There's so many reasons. And they spend the next couple of years just kind of hanging on, and then they leave after the eighth grade. The other piece that's so important is that eighth grade arithmetic, quote unquote, arithmetic algebra. Those are the functions that, that mo are most challenging to those middle school students. The teachers in the eighth grade mathematics have got to be able to teach some form of algebra. We have too many of our teachers that are teaching arithmetic in the eighth grade, and they're not functioning very well in the ninth grade because the ninth grade starts algebra. So we know that for a fact. There's a, a gentleman out of California who is at USC who came and gave a speech, and he honed in specifically on math skills in the eighth grade. And that's what he tells us is the most important. In the sixth grade, you have to make sure that a student can read, can comprehend, knows their, their language skills, and can move forward. In the eighth grade in the middle school, math skills are the ones that are so vital to their success. In the eighth grade, there's arithmetic versus algebra in the ninth grade, and our teachers in the eighth grade have got to be able to have, as part of their learning, part of their education system, they've got to know how to teach algebra to prepare these eighth graders for algebra because algebra is in the ninth grade. So the math skills in the eighth grade and the English language skills in the sixth grade are the two most important areas in middle school. We'll talk about that some more, Senator. We all know, and especially in this day and age, the students of today are tomorrow's workers, especially in the high tech sector. Talk a little bit about the testing and the end of course, we've gotten away uh, now, for a lot of folks don't realize this, from the tax test, and we'll just start taking the end of course exams. Talk about those testing dynamics and some of the challenges you've had to overcome in moving to where we are today. We have changed from the tax test, and we will be starting the new end of course exams with this entering freshman class that's in school today. And those ninth graders will be taking end of course exams. We truly believe at the end of a course, you can study and take a test because that's what you've been learning. What we were so consider concerned about before, what we were so concerned about before was the idea that teachers were teaching to the test and that was all you really needed at the end, was to pass the test. And that's really not what this is about. This is about what you've learned throughout the entire semester and the entire year. So we really believe that end of course exams at the end of the day are going to give us what we need to really bring that fluidity of coursework and a better product for the student. What we're about to see this legislative session starting in January is what a lot of people believe is a crisis. I happen to believe in Texas, crisis equals opportunity. And I think this is an opportunity for us to look at education from a different perspective. I think what you're going to hear us do is we're going to look for those services, those programs that don't work according to what we want them to, that we can take out and put money into those that do work.
We need to find better systems for our students. We need to make sure that we don't have duplication of services. We spend a lot of money in Texas on education, but the end product is not what we look for. We only look to pass coursework. We need to be able to say that here's the amount of money we've spent and here's what it's gone to and here's the success of those dollars. If we don't do that, we don't know what the productivity is, we don't hold the teachers accountable, we don't hold the students accountable, then we've just thrown good money after bad. We've got to restructure the way we look at school finance. It is a big task and it's one that's going to be very difficult, but I think we're up to the challenge. We're ready for the opportunity. Well, we're going to have to leave it there, Senator. Sure appreciate you coming by. And folks, be sure and join us in the next coming days between now and November 2nd in particular. We're going to have a series of interviews with Senator Shapiro we'll be providing you. Remember, as always, you're either an insider or not. Come back and see us, and we appreciate you doing so. I'm Jim Cardle for Texas Insider. Thanks.